fiber, soluble fiber is like the, the it's almost like a probiotic, right? Uh, prebiotic. Pre prebiotic, yeah. So do you recommend other prebiotics like kimchi or yogurt or something like that, or, or is kind of fiber your go-to? Yeah, soluble so, fiber. yeah, soluble. So I should say that uh, just like the supplements, I try to get it all from whole food. Uh, and uh, almost every time I mention the fiber uh, aspect of the gut muscle story or gut anything story, gut, gut optimization, most people go straight to, uh, well, I supplement with this or, or that. And, um, you know, I should say that, uh, you know, there, there are a few studies where soluble fiber supplementation by itself didn't necessarily improve health and actually made it worse. So depending on the genetic background, there's actually a study in mice where they gave them soluble fiber as a supplement, not the whole food. And that actually increased liver cancer. Now, I'm not saying that if you eat a high fiber diet, you're going to have an increased liver cancer, because the fact is there's no evidence to show that that's true. Um, you know, mo most of the studies um, show that a higher fiber intake is associated with a lower risk of all cause mortality. So if there was a higher incidence of liver cancer, you'd expect to see a higher total uh, mortality risk with a higher fiber intake. So it could be something that's specific to just that uh, genetic background in mice. It could be something specific only to mice. Nonetheless, I'd say that the lowest risk strategy is getting your fiber intake from food because that's how we evolve to, you know, high fiber uh, intake. So my go-to are vegetables, very high intakes of vegetables. So, um, you know, just as for the why to that, so, you know, whole grains do have soluble fiber, a fair amount of soluble fiber, but they're calorie dense, you know, one ounce of, of uh, grains, whole grains, not refined grains, has about a hundred calories. Whereas one ounce of broccoli has uh, less than 10 calories. So I can eat, you know, 10 ounces of broccoli for the one ounce of, of uh, whole grains. So if you look at the solu fi soluble fiber per calorie, and again, we operate basically on total amount of calories. How can I get the biggest bang for my calorie buck? Um, vegetables are the king. So, uh, you know, I, I eat tremendous volumes. I shouldn't say tremendous like that. I eat very large volumes of vegetables in, in addition to, you know, everyday fish, everyday yogurt, full fat yogurt, and occasionally meat. Uh, so, you know, so I'll have 500 grams of broccoli today, uh, 350 grams of cauliflower today. Uh, you know, I, I just had about um, 500 grams of carrots. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I'll have 200 grams of spinach, you know, most days at 40 grams of parsley. It all adds up to a fiber intake uh, for me that's somewhere in the 90 to 100 gram per day range based on my 2,600 calories. So, um, yeah, for me, more is better. And then some people say, well, the RDA is 30 grams, but yeah, we evolved, as I mentioned, a hundred grams on a 3000 calorie per day diet. So with three grams of fiber per hundred calories, if you do the math, um, you know, 2,600 calories a day times 3.3, I mean, I'm in the 80, it should be at least 80 grams per day, right? Evolutionarily. So, but then again, it comes down to my biomarkers. If I was eating this high fiber diet and my biomarkers weren't great, I would change the approach. Maybe carnivore would be better for me, or maybe vegan would be better for me. So from my experience, and actually it's funny because I purposefully cut my fiber intake from more than an hundred gram per day average um, up to about two years ago, a year and a half, two years ago to less, to just see what effect it would have on my biomarkers. And it's been in the last year that I've seen increases for glucose and increases for creatinine, things that are going in the wrong direction. So also on this last dietary period, I increased my fiber intake back similarly back to where it was, in, including, you know, 500 to 800 grams of broccoli and cauliflower, which get me probably 10 more grams of soluble fiber than I was getting in my previous dietary periods. Um, because a lot of my blood test variables are correlated with my fiber intake per hundred calories. So increasing fiber density should lead to better blood test results on this measurement compared to my last one. So, um, and again, you know, I expect that the gut playing a major role in that process, because a lot of the vegetables, besides all the other nutrients, one component of that is soluble fiber. So, right. Okay, cool. No, that sounds excellent. So thank you very much. Uh, and we've run over and thank you for staying. No on. worries. Um, we covered a lot of things and, uh, it would have been, I mean, I think we could have covered like an hour on each one. Um, you, you, if, if your knowledge is so wide and so deep on each one, it would be yeah. great. But anyway, so before we wrap up, uh, so one last question. So if there was one um, one habit or one thing that you could do to extend your health span as long as possible, what would you what would you pick? It's like your top. Wow. Yeah, so uh, 
wow, to reduce it all. And yet I'm generally anti-reductionist uh, because most things are multivariable, right? So um, my first thought, first thoughts go to calorie restriction versus exercise. Um, okay. And then, so now it's the battle of CR versus exercise, which would I prefer, right? So I'd probably go with, uh, I wouldn't wish to pick one or the other. I'd ideally have them both, right? But uh, I guess I'd go with exercise in that case. Um, but then CR may have the longest lifespan extending effect compared to exercise. Maybe exercise would get me seven to 10 extra years, but maybe higher quality years. I'd be more functional, more fit, more, more vibrant. Whereas uh, <laughs> pure calorie restriction with no exercise, I, you know, I, I would be eating less, but my life may feel like I'm, you know, that, you know, the old, old joke with CR, you know, you're going to eat less, you're going to live forever, but it's going to feel like you're living forever. You know, it's so slow and monotonous that you, right. So yeah, I'd probably go with exercise on that. But that said too, uh, if you're going to pin me in the reductionist box. Uh, right. Yeah, I know it. Yeah. It's a complex thing. So it's difficult. It is. Yeah. To bring it down. yeah. Okay. So thank you very much. Can you tell uh, everyone where they can find, get your book and where they can find more information about you? Yep. So the book is on Amazon. It's called, uh, you can just search me by name or microbial burden, uh, a major cause of aging and age related disease. I've updated a few, it a few times with uh, recent uh, uh, information from the literature. And I show the ways that microbial burden actually is involved in all of the hallmarks of aging, which isn't, uh, isn't mentioned at all in any of the anti-aging approaches. Most people only focus on the human side of the equation. I'm Kind of showing the evidence on the other side of that so that you, you can find that on amazon uh, as a kindle ebook uh and i put it as an ebook just so i could update it with new information kind of like a tesla updating it's uh you know fully self-driving software um and then yeah you can find me lots of places online i've got the youtube channel that's uh recent and growing uh i've got a website that you know you can leave comments or send me a message facebook twitter just search me by name or go to google while google still exists for the u.s government breaks it up <laughs> or maybe not. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for having me on, Richard. Uh, it's a good time. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Lescott. And uh, we will link to everything in the notes. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks, Richard. Take care. Thank you. Right. Bye. Bye. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.